Yo, what is good people? Ben from Lover of Tech and we are back with another video. This time it's a camera comparison between the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the S22 Ultra. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform built for Galaxy versus the Exynos 2200. Yes, Exynos powered based on the fact that I am in UK, Europe based. So we're going to see a year difference. Is it worth upgrading to the new S23 Ultra? We're going to test it in daylight, low light, and for photos and videos. So let's go through the specs and then come back to the main camera comparison. Let's do a quick breakdown of the camera hardware and specs, starting with the S23 Ultra. It is built on a quad rear camera system based around a new 200 megapixel HP2 sensor, an improved 12 megapixel ultra wide with better autofocus, a 10 megapixel 3x zoom, and a 10 megapixel 10x zoom, and a new 12 megapixel selfie. Now moving over to the S22 Ultra, it is built around a 108 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 10 megapixel 3x zoom, a 10 megapixel 10x zoom, and a 40 megapixel selfie. The best way to watch this camera comparison is in the highest resolution and frame rate at 4K60 on a large display with headphones to listen out for the audio. There will be chapters in the description below, but definitely sit back and watch through it. And let me tell you this, you might be surprised with the results that you see here. We are now in the 4K UHC 60 frames a second video recording mode on the selfie. It's a nice sunny day. So again, just seeing how the image quality dynamic range stabilization is like. Quick run. And we've now switched to the 4K UHC 30 frames a second video recording mode. Again, just seeing how the image quality changes dynamic range, sharpness, detail, and stabilization. Quick run. Now we are in the video portrait mode with the background blur on both the S23 Ultra and the S22 Ultra. Difference is the S23 Ultra now has the ability to do this at a high resolution in 4K UHD above the 1080p that is limited on the S22 Ultra. Again, both benefit from the ability to be able to change the blur effect, which obviously default is on five in a standard blur. And you can see that this is something that you can also do on the S22 Ultra. But the image quality difference, being able to shoot in 4K is fantastic. We are now in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the rear cameras. Again, just seeing the image quality, stabilization, detail, dynamic range. Quick run. In 4K 30 frames a second, we do have maximum flexibility on both cameras. Now on the ultra wide, Quick run. Let's move into the extended zoom ranges. 3X, 3X. Let's extend to the 10X. And 10x. Come back to the main camera. And as both do match in this area, you can pause the recording on the same clip, continue recording on the same video clip, take pictures. And of course, my favorite in 4K30, switch to the selfie. Offering you the maximum and the most seamless video recording on both. So it's great to see nothing has changed here. We've now switched to the 4K UHD 60 frames a second video recorder mode and just seen how the image quality performance is like, stabilization, colors, and details. Quick run. Now, one pain point that is still here 
on these Samsung Galaxy devices, even on the S23 Ultra is, although you can record in 4K UHD 60 frames a second on all the lenses, including the selfie, it cannot be continuous. You have to stop recording to switch to the other lens and start again. Not very seamless, and I really wish they had fixed it on the S23 Ultra, but it's still prevalent here. We are still in the 4K UHD 60 frames a second video recorder mode, but we've now switched to the ultra wide. Again, just seeing how the image quality is like. Stabilization, dynamic range, quick run. Still in the 4K UHD 60 frames a second video recorder mode. And we've now switched to the 3X to see how the image quality and the performance is like. And we are now in the 10X periscope zoom mode on both in 4K UHD 60 frames a second. And again, just seeing how the image quality is like. We are now in the new 8K 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the S23 Ultra versus the previous 8K 24 frames a second video recorder mode on the S22 Ultra. Instantly, one thing you're going to notice is the field of view is much wider and you've got stabilization and you are not getting that rolling jello effect. Let's do a quick run and see the difference. We are now in the super steady video recorder mode on both the S23 Ultra and also the S22 Ultra. Difference is, S23 Ultra now has it in the ability to shoot in 2560 by 1440p QHD resolution in 30 and 60 frames a second on the Ultra Wide and the One X. So let's see the performance and stabilization and the image quality of a heavy run. Switch to One X, One X. We are now in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the main sensor with the rear sensors with me in the frame as the subject. Again, just seeing how it handles the environment, but mainly with me in terms of the details, skin tones, colors. Still in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode, but we switched to the ultra wide on the rear cameras. Just with me in the subject, again, seeing how the stabilization, colors, detail, really work out with the rear cameras of me and the subject. We are now in the 4K UHD 60 frames a second video recording mode on the main sensor with me in the frame as the subject. This is the rear cameras, again, just seeing how it behaves in terms of how the image quality changes, dynamic range, sharpness, detail. Still in a 4K UHD 60 frames a second video recorder mode. Now on the ultra wide angle cameras and just seeing how the image changes and the quality of it with the colors, dynamic range and stabilization. So we are now in the 8K recorder mode, 8K 30 frames a second video recorder mode on the Galaxy S23 Ultra versus the 8K 24 frames a second video recorder mode on the S22 Ultra. Just seeing the difference. We are now in the video portrait mode on the One X camera main sensor for the S23 Ultra and the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Again, difference is 4K UHD on the S23 Ultra versus 1080p on the S22 Ultra. Just seeing how the difference is on the main camera lens.
So we are now in the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recorder mode. On the selfie and low light, just seeing how the performance is between the two. And we're testing out the 4K UHD 30 frames a second video recording mode on the S23 Ultra and the S22 Ultra, just seeing how the low light performance is like. Start with the main sensor. Quick switch to the ultra wide. What a fun of it, 10x. Let's start things off with the daytime landscape photos and starting with the ultra wide. And in this instance, the S22 Ultra, especially when looking at the sky, does have a more saturated look to the blues, while the S23 Ultra is more balanced and accurate. This carries over to be the same when moving to the main wide sensor as the S23 Ultra actually tones down even a bit more when it comes to the color balance and saturation. In the 3X zoom mode, the S22 Ultra does look to have more contrast to the final image compared to the S23 Ultra, which looks to embrace the more natural look of the golden hour sun and preserves more of the shadows. This next set of landscape images starting again with the ultra wide. Both phones are working in a very hard backlit situation, which most would consider an extreme HDR test. Not by much, but the S23 Ultra does increase the shadows in the foreground compared to the S22 Ultra. On the main wide sensor, both phones handle the exposure of the sun very well while maintaining good detail on the overall scene. Testing out the extended zoom modes from 3x to 100x, both are neck and neck and feel to produce near enough the same results, with split differences potentially coming down to the extreme exposure management of the sun. Now comparing the 200 megapixel and 50 megapixel JPEG shooting modes on the S23 Ultra compared to the 108 megapixel on the S22 Ultra, Here's where zooming in 200 and even 300% is required to really see the difference. And in this case, you can of course tell the difference which favors the S23 Ultra, even in the 50 megapixel mode. Just be aware the extra processing time for capture and shooting in good lighting condition and storage management. Both have a good minimum focusing distance on the main sensor. Thanks to autofocus being built onto the ultra wide, macro mode works great on both with the S23 Ultra pulling slightly closer. When it comes to the selfie images, for as long as I analyzed the pictures both in standard and portrait mode, it was very difficult to tell the difference between the two, with both having good detail, colors, edge detection, and background blur. The only difference really was the color tone hue of the sky. These are last set of daylight images using the rear cameras with me in the frame as the subject. You can tell instantly from the ultra wide up to the 10x zoom how consistent the approach to color is on both phones, with the S23 Ultra embracing a more accurate depiction of the golden hour sun cast on my skin, while the S22 Ultra is going for a more contrast based look. The main sensor on the S23 Ultra does look to have more detail as well, with good quality in the 3x zoom on both, with also what looks like a sharper image at 10x for the S22 Ultra. In portrait mode for the 1x and 3x zoom lens, the color characteristics are the same as before, with both matching each other when it comes to edge detection and background blur. Let's move over to the low light images, starting with the landscape images with no night mode active. Although there is a slight magenta color shift more around what you see with the street lamps, the S23 Ultra does have a much cleaner and better exposed image compared to the S22 Ultra. When moving to the main wide sensor, the S23 Ultra still produces both a cleaner, less noisy image with better exposure overall. Although likely cropping in onto the main sensor for both, in the 3x zoom mode, the image from the S22 Ultra looks a little bit more useful in the 10x zoom, they are both pretty much on par. 
moving to this extreme low light test showing the difference with no night mode and then with night mode active. The ultra wide and the main sensor favor good results from the S23 Ultra showing a noticeable improvement from the S22 Ultra. But things do grain out on the S23 Ultra in the 10X and the 3X mode compared to the S22 Ultra. Night mode greatly improved things for both phones which yet again indicates why using night mode when possible is always preferred. The selfie performance in low light is another area we see greatly favors the improvements on the S23 Ultra with its new 12 megapixel selfie and image processing, which in three scenarios in both standard and portrait mode with no night mode, night mode and screen flash for the front screen active, the S23 Ultra is more visible, more color accurate and still holds better edge detection and blur in low light. These last set of low light images with the rear cameras with me in the frame as a subject without night mode active, although both ultra wide are struggling, the S23 Ultra is more usable showing the improvements here in low light, stay consistent. Both do great with the main sensor, but again, the S23 Ultra pulls ever so slightly ahead with a cleaner image. When using night mode, the ultra wide on both see a major improvement with the S23 Ultra producing a more pleasing image when it comes to the colors to the skin tones overall. This stays consistent when moving to the main wide sensor with the S23 producing the better image, more down to the colors. Portrait mode on One X without night mode works well on both, but again, the S23 Ultra steals it with a clean image and better colors. In the 3X mode for portrait mode, although the S22 Ultra does have a softer image, it does produce better colors overall. Night mode is the difference maker on both the 1X and 3X modes for portrait mode, but just to note, I do feel the S23 Ultra has overdone it ever so slightly with the saturation in the 1X mode. Let's now conclude with the video performance starting off with the selfie and in terms of the overall quality, the improvements to the S23 Ultra are noticeable. This doesn't take away from the S22 Ultra, but considering you have the ability to shoot in 4K UHD for video portrait mode and the better colors in video for the overall scene and when you apply it also to the skin tones being improved with better detail, this is a win for the S23 Ultra here. For the rear cameras, the S23 Ultra does show what feels like a generational leap ahead when it comes to the video quality and feature set. Again, this does not completely take away from how good video is already on the S22 Ultra, but when considering how Samsung have managed to completely turn 8K video from being unusable on the S22 Ultra due to the massive crop factor lack of stabilization and the rolling shot jello effect to now have an actual usable 8K video is nothing short of impressive. Having Super Steady now working at high resolution at QHD with much improved stabilization across the board, even in normal recording modes and shooting 4K video portrait mode, the S23 Ultra is a step above when it comes to video. That is it for me with this ultimate camera comparison between the S23 Ultra and the S22 Ultra. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. That's it for me, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS to Tech Level Squad so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.